It's funny how people say, take time to appreciate the little things in life. Sometimes these little things are so small they are often overlooked and misunderstood. And that's the wonder of macro photography. It captures intricate details the naked eye cannot see and brings us into this magical world that is rarely seen and definitely worth exploring. I'm Lens Lim and welcome to my world of macro photography. To me, orthopods are important to the ecosystem, and as I photograph them, there's always something new to learn about them. I discovered how fascinating they are, strong and tenacious, and photographing them is immensely rewarding. I use the Canon EOS R6, the EF 100mm f2.8L macro ISUSM lens, speed light flashes, speed light transmitter, together with the control ring mount adapter to conveniently customize any exposure settings. Out in the field, it's best to always be prepared, such as wearing the right footwear and reading the weather amongst bringing other essential items. The EOS R6 is built solid and has the ergonomic elements that make it adaptable for most DSLR users. So the fact that my EF 100mm macro lens works seamlessly with the EOS R system without any loss in image quality and performance is simply incredible. The EOS R620 megapixel full-frame sensor is a solid performer. Image quality is fantastic with high levels of details in raw files and the camera performs remarkably in low ambient light scenarios. A feature that has greatly improved my workflow is the Vary Angle Touch Panel LCD monitor that helps me get my shots in any challenging angles. I believe that nature is meant to be appreciated as she is. When I'm in the field, I try to avoid direct contact with my subjects to reduce stress on them. Having a smooth workflow, perfecting my techniques and laying down the right foundation is important. Macro photography can get technical, but camera settings are fairly standard. Of course, depending on the circumstances, there will be some tweaking required, but as a general guide, start out with these settings and experiment as you go along. For ISO, I set it at 100 to get the cleanest images since most of my shots are illuminated by flash. To minimize any motion blur, the general rule of thumb guarding shutter speeds is to match your minimum shutter speed with the focal length of your lens. And as I deal with magnified vibrations, I set it from 1 over 125 to 1 over 250 depending on the circumstances. Macro lenses produce thin depths of field, so you have to narrow your aperture to get more in focus. The sweet spot for most lenses is at f8, but anywhere from f8 to f16 will work. However, anything above f16 will introduce diffraction and degrade your images. Finally, to get the most accurate colours for your subjects, check your white balance by taking a shot of your fingertip and then adjust the colour temperature that best matches it. Getting the depth of field right can be challenging. In a nutshell, depth of field is about the focus region of the photo. So to get as much detail in focus as possible, you will want a larger depth of field. Many factors affect it like aperture, magnification, focal length and subject distance. But a good trick would be to align your sensor parallel to your subject so you can achieve more depth of field. Sometimes the best way to appreciate the beauty of your subject is to have it entirely in focus. But when it's not possible with one shot, you may utilize focus stacking to achieve your desired image by focusing on different regions of your subject and blending them together in post-processing. I use the Canon Speedlight EL1, which has an insanely fast recycling speed of 0.9 seconds at full power. Handheld focus stacking has never been made easier. It also features a built-in modeling light that helps with focusing in lower light. Shooting handheld at higher magnifications elevate the slightest shakes and vibrations which cause motion blur. The EOS R6 in-body image stabilization helps to minimize that. Coupled with the EF 100mm f2.8L macro lens, which is equipped with hybrid stabilization, they both work together perfectly to reduce motion blur and produce more usable shots. When I first started out with macro photography, using a flash directly on my subject casted hard shadows and often framed my subjects in a hot spot. After learning what a diffuser could do to the final outcome, I was intrigued to learn more about lighting. Contrasting shadows and even lighting will go a long way in bringing out the charm of your subject. Control your lighting to bring out the textures and attention to important details. A good separation from the background will also help you achieve a good subject isolation. 
The diffuser takes the roll as a light source as light from the flash spreads through it. It's relatively easy to make your own diffuser. All you need are materials that are widely available and affordable. Plastic foils can form a sturdy base, aluminum foil can act as a reflector to direct light, and any translucent material like packing foam can facilitate the light spread. The night, in my opinion, is the best time for macrophotography. When dusk falls, the forest comes alive. Nocturnal creatures are usually more docile and less jittery, which makes them ideal subjects. Many people wonder if finding something interesting to shoot is by pure luck. Well, there are tips to increase your chances. By holding my torchlight at eye level, any reflected lights are likely eye shine from subjects, like spiders or even mammals. Another tip is to shine your light from the underside of leaves and spot for the silhouette of unsuspecting creatures. Shooting at night poses certain challenges. Focusing is definitely one of them. It is good to know that the EOS R6 EVF has literally no lag and approximately 3.69 million dots resolution makes a huge difference when I need precise metal focusing. At night, it is always great to experiment with different lighting techniques. Subjects that have translucent or shiny bodies may require a bit of lighting creativity to show off their beauty. Using two articulating arms to mount the Canon Speedlight 430EX 3RT flashes and the SCE 3RT wireless transmitter on the hot shoe, I can easily detach either flash and reposition them to highlight intricate details with backlighting. This radio controlled setup gives me a lot of flexibility to work around complicated settings or obstacles. For occasions where I need to get up close with a specific subject, but focusing through the EVF is not possible, I will rely on the 3-inch very angle touchscreen LCD monitor. Focus peaking is really handy when focusing manually. Together with a live view image magnification, I can do a 5 to 10 times zoom in on the subject to achieve precise focus. The focus guide can be used with peaking to help pinpoint my focus for extremely small subjects in low light. What I've learned through my work is the importance of protecting our biodiversity. Every photo helps us to understand how they behave and their place in the ecosystem. It's also my way of contributing to science and research work one image at a time. My advice to anyone starting out in macro photography is to be patient and enjoy the process. Keep practicing and be familiar with your equipment and workflow. Get inspired and do not be afraid to ask questions. Canon, delighting you always.